think about your audience before you even start writing. And then you write it and you make sure that it does kind of have that appeal for the core audience. I write a book because I think there's a story that a lot of, want, a lot of people want to hear and I think about who those people are. So in the first instance with Golden Handcuffs, I, I had worked and lived in the city and I felt that there were lots of people who were either in that world or had been in that world or were going into that world or were just thinking about it. And that was the audience for that book, at least that was the core audience. And it may, there may be like a halo effect and there may be more people who also want to read it, general public, but they, I knew who it was. You have to think about what that audience is and where they hang out and what they read and what they consume in terms of media. You have to be prepared to um, have brainstorms with target readers to work out what they want. Um, you have to come up with a title that's relevant, get, get a designer to design a good cover that represents what's inside and will appeal to the right people. Um, you have to um, plan the launch party and make sure the right people come to that and that everyone has a good time uh, and that people start spreading the word about how great the book is. You have to do all the social media, so online, you know, collecting email addresses, making sure that pe the people are kind of, again, spreading the word. Um, and then you have to really PR the hell out of it in terms of newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, if you can. Um, and that gets, starts with just really small, maybe a writing magazine or a kind of a local newspaper, anything that you can get that just basically says that um, there is a story here. Always try and get free promotion. Don't think about putting ads in newspapers or magazines or billboards or anything like that because apart from anything else, people know that they're adverts and they don't go for something that looks like an advert. Um, but what people do want is to read an interesting story. So they might want to read a feature in a newspaper or a magazine. And as long as there is an interesting story, whether it's exactly the story of your book or the story of you, the author, or just something that is relevant to, to one or the other, then people will want to read it and, and you should go for that rather than please buy my book. That's, that's not a message that anyone really wants to read. Build a fan base um, across any, uh, any platforms that are relevant. So um, build it up through email, so have a website, make sure you've got somewhere that says you know, email this if you're interested or you know, put your name in here if you want to be um, contacted when the next book comes out. Don't spam people, don't kind of collect their email addresses and then use it way too often. Um, but build up that fan base in the right way that's appropriate. Um, that includes um, having a page on Facebook and a Twitter account because those followers and friends um, and fans will, they, they, they're signing up to you and to your book and your brand and anything that you stand for. So in my case that I will put things on my Facebook page that are not necessarily directly relevant to my latest book, but it may be relevant to a previous one or a story that's, um, you know, current. Um, just something that's that's in some way relevant to the author or the book. So social media is just an easy, free way of getting promotion. What publishing is is telling the world about it and getting the book in the hands of the readers, the right readers. Self-publishing can be a really good option and um, really successful and very profitable if you do it right. Um, the key thing with self-publishing is that you have to be willing to be that publisher and do all the things that the departments of a big publishing house would do for you. Definitely with marketing, with uh, in terms of things like getting your book in the block of books at the front of Waterstones, that's heavy marketing and it requires thousands of pounds and that's out of reach for me and for any other um, one-man band um, publishing company or author. But the PR and the promotion side, TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, they may seem um, inaccessible, but they often are accessible as long as there's a story there because all of these media outlets, they want to they want to broadcast or publish the news and if there is a little story that is relevant and worthwhile they will print or publish or broadcast it. Um, the key thing is um, getting those contacts and then making sure that they they have a story because they don't want they don't want a press release just saying this person's book has just come out that's not a story but if someone has been um, half eaten by a tiger and written about their experiences 
that's that's the seeds of a story because there's something real there and something quite different and exciting. The first thing I did with my first book when it was a couple of months away from publication was send an email out to everyone I knew um, saying, this is a strange question, but I've got this book coming out. It's about my time in the city. I believe it's worthwhile and there's a story in there. Um, and does anyone know any journalists? And I um, got all sorts of strange responses back. And they weren't directly useful contacts, but I followed up on everyone, and then each one of them, I'd either taken them for coffee or um, given them a phone call. After a while, I, got, I managed to get um, a double-page spread in The Observer um, on bank holiday in August. I got um, radio and TV and um, magazines contacting me, sort of saying, we hear there's this story about a woman who left the city and you know writing a book about it and that for them was enough of a story that they were they read about it or heard about it and came to me and you could say that was luck and there was definitely an element of luck in there but i was pushing and pushing and i was desperate to just get get the word out there in whatever way i realized that i'm quite fortunate in that the the type of books i write are prable what I really love doing is picking quite a meaty sort of social issue or um, theme um, like lads mags and the impact they have on society. Some people, maybe academics or kind of heavily literary authors, might think that they are above the kind of promoting and flogging the book thing. But actually, surely they want the right type of people and the right, you know, and as many people to read their book as possible. Surely that's their aim. And in order to do that, I think they need to just make people aware of what's inside, the real nuggets that should appeal. And that's all PR should be. When I got um, shown the, um, the initial design for my, well, I think it was my first book with um, Avon HarperCollins, I, um, I was really, I wasn't convinced by it at all. And what I did was like, I, I saw it as a kind of focus group. I um, emailed 30 people, got 30 responses to questions like, you know, what do you think this book is? And what, um, what would you, you know, would you pick it up? And would you read it? And why and why not? Um, and I got the responses and they were all saying the same thing, which was like, no, it's totally not appropriate. I wouldn't read it. You know, it, it was really negative. I fed that back to the publisher and basically the publisher said, Thank you so much for all that. Um, thanks for doing all that research. Um, we're basically going to completely ignore you and carry on. I think we're just coming out of the phase where everyone, or, or the kind of the history of authors being so grateful for getting a publishing contract that they, you know, they just have to sort of shrink back into the shadows as soon as they've got it and let the publisher do their thing. I think no longer is that the case. And frankly, some authors would do a lot better by um, not shrinking into the shadows and just, you know, doing their own thing because authors, a lot of authors really know their work and publishers should also know their work. And if they don't, then there's, you know, then the author's just being let down. Yeah, I think it's exactly the same as with every other trend that's come. So the kind of Stieg Larsson trend, uh, uh, or like Scandinavian thriller trend, the vampire trend, and now the mummy porn trend. Um, it's something where that genre and that type of book has existed for a long time. And there's actually been much better examples of mummy porn, if that's what you want to call it, i.e. erotic fiction, um, from 20, 30 more years ago. Um, and it's basically led by... Um, a publisher or publishers deciding that that's going to be the big thing for this year or the, this next couple of years. There, there have always been these authors writing in different ways and it's only when it gets dressed up as the next big thing that people go for it. I don't think mummy porn is anything new. Every book is interesting in some way so you've just got to pull out those strands of, um, of interest I guess and, um, and promote them.